these do not exist in western New York on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, oddly enough, Tractor Supply and the giant Hillman selection of fasteners they have, they do not carry a single stud in the entire store. Yes, I asked the clerk, and well, you know how that goes. I got these from the Advance Auto. Now these are just made by doormen. Da, da, da. There's the part number. I think it's just a universal exhaust flange hardware kit. However, they are the correct size 10150. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. We need five. Obviously, they're a tad too long. So we're gonna chop it off. What I'm gonna do, here's my plan. I'm gonna show you my plan. It's gonna take and mark it a little on the long side. Gives me some room for error. I think we can stick it here in the advice. I put one of the nuts in there just to hold it. And then we will hold it with some vice grips because our cutoff wheel is going to have a tendency to unwind it. But let us hold that. I got the chopper. We'll chop it off. Cover your eyes. There's the cutoff piece. Alright, and then I got out the Uniburr. It's a tool for deburring. Sent to me by a viewer all the way from downtown Hawaii. That's what it looks like. It's a cutter. We can stick it on here and, and finish off the edge. Slow and steady wins the race for this little fella. Might be a tad on the warm side still. But that should get rid of the burr. Nut should spin right on ever so nicely, which it does. Let's grab it down here on the end, spin that out, do that five more times, four more times, and we will have the studs that we need. Like I say, they're just a smidge longer, not gonna hurt anything. That's what I'm gonna go for. Better to have it too long than too short, I say. studs are made we will have to administer I think the classic reach around here and get all these started I already ran a thread chaser through the hole on the manifold the other day so they should they should thread in they might they aren't dormant so they might be a tad off but I'll see if I can't get them started Never sees on the arm. It's like the automotive herpes, man. This stuff just spreads. There's that one. I think that top one, yeah, this is the one that the hole was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, let's see, get my pipe out of the way a little bit. guys' way so I can get to that last one. It's going to be my best bet. Yep. Alright. Oh, somebody's Google. Oh, son of a monkey. This car is out to get me today. Right, I got to hang this pipe. Okay. We will survive this job. Crank in here. Oh, that's it. I'm going home. <laughs> oh, 
gonna have to give up at some point. Usually when days go like this, I do give up. I'm a quitter. There's one. Wow. I don't think I'm gonna get the other ones from back here. No, probably not. So I'll get them other two tightened up. I gotta move the pipe again, but you kind of see the process. So I tighten down them three front bolts. <clears throat> I thought that we could put this back on. However, I went ding dong and I didn't get a freaking bolt for it. The longest bolts I have here are 60 millimeters. So I was gonna grab just a, you know, eight by, 60 thought it'd be long enough, but it just comes right to the edge. I can get it in without a washer, but eh, We need like a 65 or 70 millimeter bolt So now we're gonna put These studs in Hopefully get a wobble through here Because I went and got these broken ones out as opposed to just you know blowing a hole through it and using nuts and bolts I decided to just get the old ones out Yes. There's a little, little bit of crust in there, so. Oh, ding dong. I grabbed a 5-16th because I thought we had an 8 millimeter bolt. Oh, 7 16 bigger than 10. Let's see, 27-64 should be close to 10 mil, right? <laughs> On a 3 inch chuck, how's that work for you, fella? Plan B. <laughs> ah, I should not be down here working today. We got bad aura. There, go in there with a little carbide burr. There we go. Okay, they're starting. Or so they feel. Where's my nut? There it is. I don't know if the stud installer will fit beside these. It looks like it will. That won't. Can't get nothing right today. I very rarely work on a Sunday, but I've got a super busy week. I need my lift. And I got totally sidetracked yesterday. Stud installer is a little bit too fat. There. Plus it puts little flat spots on the stud, so if you got a reef of stud in with it, that's not the best kind of installer to use. You're better off double nutting it and then spinning them in that way because it can put a little bit of a burr on it. A little overkill on the extension. That's okay. It's one I had out for doing the front. Keeps me away from my work, you know. Snug these fellas up good. Hopefully that new gasket seals well. There we go. Professional. So there's those. Hopefully you guys can see that. Made the one just a tiny bit longer. That almost bothers me a little. But 
not enough to where I'm gonna do anything about it. Okay, and then like I say, we'll put our bracket back up there when I get the appropriate size bolt for it. And then that little guy is all installed. So throw the interior together, we'll see if the clutch works and then keep motoring. There are some cracks around the uh, rubber on the base of the shifter too. So that's going to give it a little stink inside the cabin. But that is something that can be fixed at another time easily enough. There's a gasket that goes on here that appears to be in pretty good shape. We will remove the Gorilla Tape. Now this is only gonna go in one way. It does have a slot on it. And that should line up with a pin here in the top of the transmission, which it does. And then uh, this piece here that goes on the bottom of the ball, this can fall off, so uh, stick that on there. If yours is like really clean and dry, put a little dab of grease on it. But we're gonna line that up in the tray. Should be able to. Keep the rag close by. Yeah, just a couple things here you gotta line up at the same time. It can be a little tedious, but once you get it, it'll slip right in. And we'll line up our screw holes, which are non-directional. That's gonna be these three six millimeter bolts that take a 10 millimeter wrench. A lot of people are particular like that. If you're like, oh, use this, take this 10 millimeter bolt out. Well, technically it's not a 10 millimeter bolt. It's a six millimeter bolt, but it does take a 10 millimeter spanner. Or in our case, we're using a T-handle. So we'll get this little guy snugged up. You don't have to kill these things. Now they're just little. Take it easy. Yeah, how many gears does this thing have anyway? Does anybody know? Uh, she's a six speed. Should we get it in reverse? Yep, there we go. Had to roll her a little. So there is that. Now we have a rubber boot, a boot, and then what they say in Canada? I gotta tell you a story of boot something. I don't know if that's true. I'm gonna get a little bit of silicone lube to put on this so we can slip past our ring a little bit easier. Oh, slips on nice and easy with that stuff. Let's use a little bit of Sil Glide. Not to be confused with Astro Glide. It's the automotive style. line back up and then the insulation piece will go back over top of this. I'll we'll tighten these down until you have all four in. In case you got a shimmy it. Which we do. It's almost primitive compared to that modern day cars, you know? All the screws and plastic clips well, better or worse at least when you break something here you just put a bigger washer on it right so there's that those are snug now how did this little fella go around here I'm gonna have to look back through some footage See if we can use our clues. <laughs> I should have took a picture. When in doubt, take pictures. Let's 
something like that. I mean, that looks pretty good. Oh, I feel like a jerkwad. No, this has telltale signs of being up against the rubber. What's this telling us? Sometimes you gotta just talk to them, let them tell you the story. This has impressions on it. Oh, for Pete's sake. I don't know, somebody's gonna hang me. I don't have my footage here. So we're gonna do the best we can. This side is dirty, so this side must have been down. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I feel like a jerk. I'm going with it. Does this tell us anything underneath? Does this talk to us in any way? doesn't. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh, I'm gonna see it in the old footage and then it's not gonna, it's not gonna sit well with me. I usually have a pretty good memory. It's just keeping the, the heat from the cabin, you know, or from the transmission tunnel. Heat and noise. way is this offset? It's offset slightly to that side. Okay. But the dirty side is down. This has to go this direction. That's what I'm talking about. It has to. Right? When all else fails, look it up on YouTube. Here's a guy swapping his out, and he's like, hey, bro, like, if you want to swap out your shifter boot. He talks like that through the whole video. I skipped ahead. All I wanted to see was a little picture. And that's what it looks like. I seen him take it off. I don't know if she's a virgin, but that's what I'm going with. You got to give me credit, though. I was wicked close. So his, when he pulled the center console off, it was just something like this. That's essentially what we had. Hopefully somebody didn't lose their train of thought when they were doing his and, well, you know, we're going with it either way. Got a lot of moist towelettes in here. So we're gonna set that down. We gotta plug in our little pluggers. There's one here. Well, that sounded like our torque wrench. Got this one here. Plug it in. It seems kind of fluffy, doesn't it? I'm gonna make sure I've got these electrical connectors laying flat. And I do. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, let's see, that was the one bigger headed screw. I'm going to use the nicer of the screws for the exposed screws. <laughs> a lot of screw words. All right, so we'll stick that one in gingerly. And we've got the, the center one here. That was the one with the big washer on it. Get that one started. Yeah, get that one started. Then there's a couple in the little box back here. We got two left, we do. I want a nice one and one a little bit crusty. Spread it 
wow, you never know we were even in here. Get the little rubber flaps back down. Boom. Snug it. Where was this? Ah! I know this was here. Dang it, my memory is usually not this crappy. Maybe this was in here. I don't know. It is now. I feel like a jerk. I always feel like I'm losing my memory. Put this the right way so he doesn't think we installed a reverse shift pattern, you know? I don't know if people actually think that or not. Okay. Got everything good there. Grab our YouTuber. We have a rag, no extra parts. The only thing we got left is a cross member that goes underneath, but I didn't want to do that until we did the clutch slave. But let's make sure this little fella works. See that well bar as it goes, I can just get in here. So sometimes when you've been fiddling with the slave cylinder and it's been unhooked and overextended and upside down, sometimes they can get a little silly on you. This clutch feels extremely light like very little pedal effort however the pedal is returning Let's see. I can't tell I tell my big honk and boots on if there is any free play perhaps inch and a half or so I do think there is an adjustable rod on the clutch master however let's make sure it's a neutral <laughs> Alright, hold our clutch down. Goes into gear nice, no grinding, no noise. Right, yeah, I think it's gonna engage properly. It's going first, start letting the clutch up. not too far off the floor it's not super satisfying I don't know throughout its travel though it's probably about right inch or two off the floor yeah probably yeah it's about two two and a half inches off the floor before it starts to engage It works, we can carry on. He did bring a couple quarts of training fluid. So we're gonna take, hopefully not a bunch of kibbles and bits that come out of this thing. Drain the gearbox oil. Wow, it looks pretty dang clean. Magnet isn't all spiny. Smells like the gear oil, the GL4, or GL1, or GL3, I don't know. We'll let that drizzle, drizzle into a bucket. Fill plug is on the other side. I put the cross member back up. Some of you observant folks see that. I called the fella on a Sunday afternoon at home. Told him I was down working on his car. Let him know that, you know, the slave cylinder master that is on the vehicle currently works wonderfully. Well, I'm hoping this guy brought us enough oil. He's gonna brought us two quarts. And also told him that, you know, I've, given the circumstances, you know, the broken studs and wasting a whole bunch of time on those rear bolts, it cut me short on time for doing the whole job. And frankly, I don't want to work all day Sunday. I've already been down here enough and had to leave a couple times. And, kind of interrupts the family life of Tad. So he's a super cool young guy, uh, more than willing to bring it back in you know, a few weeks and we'll finish off the job. And he could drive it in the meantime, so it's not a, not a huge ordeal. So that's pretty, pretty nice of him. So we'll get this drain plug cleaned off. That has slowed down to a drip. 
go reinstall it. And he seemed to be quite understanding the fact that, you know, the problem we were having with the other bolts and stuff. He watches YouTube, so he knows. So there's that. Now, the square drive on this side, AKA crescent wrench. I do have some square drive sockets. I got a whole huge set of them at home on my tractor because that has a lot of square drive stuff. Sometimes the crescent wrench isn't very friendly on these, but in this case it is. I'm gonna take and just leave it on the lift tonight. I wanna stop. I think we need to put that clamp on to keep this heat shield from rattling. I'm gonna stop at tractor supply on the way home and grab a long bolt, assuming they're open. Yeah, I don't know, it's already six o'clock at night. So we're gonna be using the old school suction gun. Usually the holes are small enough that the hose will stay in, but not in this case. So I'm gonna take and fill it up here. I'll show you in a second. He brought some full synthetic gear oil. Some GL4. You gotta be careful when you put in manual gearboxes to make sure that the gear oil that you are using is yellow metal compliant. You know, brass, bronze, that kind of stuff. I believe your GL5s will destroy that. That's why, like, you know, your old tractors, you know, people would get in a jam. They'd think, well, I'll put some gear oil in that old transmission on the tractor and they put some GL5 in it. Next thing you know, I don't have a bushing left in it. I run mineral oil in my tractor. That's always safe. So this is essentially just like a, you know, it's like a grease gun. It is, it's actually made by Lincoln. It's a grease gun tube. And then you just take the top off and you know, fill it up with gear oil now. Somebody in the comments gonna be like, bro, it's a suction gun, man. You can suck it right out of the container. Well, the fact is you can't get down to the last drop doing that. If you have to transfer a lot of fluid, that's how you do it. You suck it right out of the container with this. And then, but I find that it just makes a huge mess. So I fill it up, close it up, stick it in the hole. Filler full. And I'll just continue to do this with the second quart. Like I say, hopefully that's enough fluid. Well, this is it. This is the last little bit of the second quart. See how close it gets us. You want it to dribble out the hole when it's full, but we'll see. Hey, look at that. Just enough. Ooh, nasty. The young fell about just the right amount. Exactly two quarts. Now you can get crazy tightening up pipe plugs on aluminum housings, so don't be stupid. I think that's going to do it for this project, Project Miata. For the time being, I'm going to wait till the morning, get that new bolt, and the job is done. It's full of new fluid. We know the clutch works, engages properly, feels nice and smooth. Just got to take it for a two around town. I do not foresee any issues. Uh, I gotta let some of the stink burn off the exhaust where we've gotten our greasy mitts on it and insane amounts of WD and whatnot trying to get those studs out. So I hope you guys found this video useful or at least entertaining to some degree. And I don't know what else to say. The only casualty in the end was that bolt that holds the wiring harness on the side of the transmission. 
I'm not gonna lose too much sleep over it. However, I do know when to say when and when not to mess with something that I'll not be messed with, and that's one of those situations. It's not a huge deal. It has lots of other fasteners on that harness, and it's not gonna cause an issue. Um, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, perhaps when he brings it back in a week or two, to finish the repairs, to finish the slave in the master cylinder there. We'll record that and then we can take you guys for a tour around town. But it is getting late in the evening on a Sunday. I wanna go home, see my chillins, chillax for a little bit and get ready to start it all over again on Monday. Seven day week for me, which happens more often than it should. Anyhow, go down there. Click the subscribe button, ring the bell so you get notifications on whatever device that you watch the YouTube on. Find us on socials, Patreon. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.